is the introduction. So a lot of the notations, concepts, try to get some of the vocabulary out today. Um, there's a lot. Um, there's a, there's a lot of different aspects of it. You've done probability in some capacities in your in your class in your in your prior algebra classes, but with probability, when we refer to probability, it is the chance slash percentage of getting a specific outcome on average in the long run. So if we were to, you know, the idea here is that if we re, if we keep doing what we're doing over and over and over and over and over, what is the chance of, of the, of getting that outcome? All right. So they are equal. So some people will be like, well, I did this. It told me, you know, and it's happened to you, you know, it told me that uh, I have a 10% chance of winning this and I've bought like a hundred different ones and I've never won. And then you get somebody else who's like, well, I bought five and each of them was a winner. You know, it's like they these probabilities can't be true or the chance, it, it can't be 10% chance of winning and stuff like that. Well, those are all short terms, okay? So when you do something five or 10 times, that isn't the necessarily that if you do it every possibility, a million times, a thousand times, Wherever there is some winners that get lucky, on um, you know, talking about like the, the normal model in terms of on one edge, and you get on the other edge. So same concepts there. But we're talking now about what is the mathematical expectation. So a lot of this is built in, in those individuals who, for example, play poker, those individuals who, who run um, anything that has, and it's something that's like gambling, um, be it casinos, um, be it um those uh, carnival games um the idea there is that if you get enough insurance companies um if you get enough people and you get enough attempts at doing what said thing is then the relative frequency of winning of, of finding that outcome will approach the probability and they will be very close in the long run. But you have to do it over and over and over. This is why when we, you know, for example, insurance is a risky thing to do if you're trying to give somebody insurance. Um, because if something catastrophic happens, you're done. But the, the major concept here is that if you are able to get enough people over and over and over and over and over and over and over, well, the insurance might look good to the individual. In the end, they're having net losses, and therefore you could win in the end. Now, there's a lot of different there's a lot of different things that we can get into, and we will touch upon. But probability, um, the chance of getting a, a specific outcome on average in the long run. Notation. We'll talk about the probability of an outcome. The probability. of outcome A. Let's call the outcome A, whatever A is. A could be like you pick a boy or something like that. We will use the notation as capital P of A. So when I say capital P of A, it means the probability of outcome A. So for example, I, E, and it doesn't have to be necessarily a letter. You can actually write it. So if I say the, pro the probability of A equals 0 0.36, okay, means there's a 36% chance of getting outcome A. 
Now, this notation will pretty much never be something that you will see. Now, there could be a letter that goes in there, okay? So I want to note that, but there's first thing for and foremost, basically the outcome, if a number, a number can be an outcome. So what's the chance that I, I pick a five or I roll a five, if you're rolling a dice, right? The outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, six. So the probability that I get a five, that's the only time when a number would go inside the parentheses. I also want to note that we typically use decimal form for probability percentages. So it's more common to say the probability is 0.36 rather than saying the probability is 36%. All right. Now the reason is here is that it, there's it, it's math purposes. So there will be some mathematics that we're going to want to do. So we want to keep them inside 0.36. Now 0.36 is equivalent in its percentage form as 36 percent, but we want to use 0.36. We can also have other examples. I could say, hey, the pro Let's say we're we're talking about M and M's, and you pick an M and M. You know, you, at random, you put your hand in the bag of M&Ms, and I say, hey, the probability of getting a blue M&M is 0 0.2. This is also equivalent to saying that 20% of the M&Ms are blue, right? Or the probability of picking a blue M&M is 20%. I could also say one-fifth. Okay, they are equivalent. Most of the times we do it, we use either the fraction or decimal form, but also note that this equals the percentage as well. Um, I might say the probability of a five is, is one six. And for example, this one right here would be the probability of rolling a five is one out of six. I could I could have written that as a decimal, uh, but usually we write it as one six if I know the exact answer is one out of six. So note that that's the only time only if number is the outcome. Probability, possibilities. A probability, the chance of something occur, what is the lowest chance that can happen? What is the lowest probability that could be possible for an outcome? What's the lowest possible pro uh, uh, probability? Correct, zero. 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 Zero percent chance of happening, right? There's no chance. It's the probability is zero. Okay. What's the highest probability? A hundred. A hundred what? Percent. A hundred percent. Okay. So what's the highest probability? Number wise. Well, we say that the probability of an outcome has to be less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to 0. So remember, we try to use the decimal form. So 1 would be the maximum probability. 1 would be that no matter what, you're going to get that outcome. All right. If I were randomly to put write up all your names on equal size pieces of paper and put them into a large hat, what's the probability that I select a student? It's going to be one because everybody is a student. What's the probability I select a boy? Now the answer has to be less than one. If, if the class is a mixture of boys and girls, the maximum probability 
is 1 for any of them, and the minimum probability is 0. So you cannot, you know, literally, I give it 110%. There's no such thing as, as a probability more than 100%. There's no such thing as a probability greater than 1. So if you have a probability greater than 1, something went wrong. Okay. Um, So probabilities can use a single event, or sorry, a single component. or multiple components. We talked about this when we did simulations. Sometimes we're just looking at each individual one and seeing what the chances are, but most likely we're gonna talk about multiple ones. So when we refer to things like the components, this is an individual outcome of an event you know we did those ones like selecting a card and you had like Tiger Woods Serena Williams and David Beckham in the notes problem that we in the one of the first problems that we had seen so we might just talk about this selection of one individual card but then we might also talk about the results of multiple events they may or sorry, the outcomes, the event may include multiple components. What do I mean by this? Well, let's talk about flipping a coin. When we flip a coin, okay, how many outcomes are there? What are the outcomes if I flip a coin? So yes. So there's two outcomes and those two outcomes are heads and tails. Now, it should be noted that in this case, the probability of each outcome is the same, but not always true, okay? So, as was noted in the, note, in the chat, the probability of a heads is 0 0.5, and the probability of a tails is 0 0.5 okay so if I asked you you know you know you might say one out of two chance okay we got to be careful now that's that's in terms of an individual so we call this the sample space so the sample space let me actually write it on in terms of the next one The sample space of an event is all possible outcomes. But please note that the sample space does not mean that each of them. Now, in your homework, the que some of the questions are going to ask you, are all the probabilities equal? Is the chance of getting each one of these outcomes the same? 
Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. So we would note this as S is equal to, we use a brace, and we're gonna list all of the possible outcomes that if I flip a coin, and I, what would the result be? And we said the result would be heads or tails. And so this is how we denote the sample space. Now, it should also be noted that the probability of the sample space should always be what? What is the probability of getting one of the outcomes in the sample space, of getting an outcome in the sample space? What is the chance, what is the probability of getting an outcome, of getting an outcome, basically? Not specifically heads or tails. Well, what's the probability of just getting an outcome? So the probability of the sample space, which means the probability of heads, plus the probability of a tails has to always equal one. If you do not get something, and, and we kind of talked about this in a previous problem. If the probability of the sample space is greater than one, this typically means that the outcomes are being double counted. So what I mean by here is if I said, you know, um, and, and this is this has happened to a lot of, you know, or if I asked you a question about um, I, I well, just basically I asked you a question and and you raised your hand twice and you you fall into this category and you fall into that category for whatever it is that means you probably double counted all right um, this means that there was there was some type of issue where you know something was double counted somebody belonged to two or more events um, and therefore you have to take that into account okay so you were double counting which is bad in terms of the probability space should only be equal to one if the probability of the sample space is less than one, this typically means either missing an outcome or responses. Okay, most likely it means you're missing an outcome. So typically we'll say like other. So if you ever say like, wait, there's an other. Why is there an other? Because you know you, have, you give them three choices and none of those answers. You get somebody who doesn't respond to any of those choices and therefore they would fall into the other category. In the end, the probability, the sum of all of the outcomes, probabilities should always equal one. If it doesn't, you might be dealing with a multiple event outcome as we're going to talk about right now. So we talked about flipping a coin, but let's talk about flipping a coin two times. Okay. Now, if I were flipping a coin two times, there are typically two different probability questions I can ask you, and we need to decipher the difference. One is categorical, one is quantitative, okay? So, for example, I might ask you the categorical one. Um, so, question A, find the sample space for all outcomes well if i'm flipping a coin and we're, we're, we'll do this a lot it's called a tree diagram 
um, and it typically helps us and we'll do it you know when I flip that first coin I can get heads or tails and then when I flip it the second time I can get heads or tails heads or tails which means my outcomes could be I get a heads and a heads head heads I get heads tails I get tails heads and I get tails tails so my sample space would be heads 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 tails tails heads tails tails now these are specifically tails heads head this is categorical okay so that would be my sample space now here's my question to you are all probabilities equal yes or no are the probability of each of these equal they actually are they actually are so first off the probability of getting the heads and the tails was equal okay so the probability of getting a heads and a tails um, is equal. So as such, when we list them this way, there is a point, there's a one in four chance of getting heads heads, a one in four chance of getting heads tails, a one in four chance of getting tails heads, and a one in four chance of getting tails tails. Given that they're all equal probabilities, these outcomes are in fact equal. They each have a probability of 0.25 and 0.25 plus 0.25 plus 0.25 plus 0.25 would be 1. B. Find the probability, find the sample space for the number of heads okay for the number of heads so if I flip a coin two times how many heads could I get what are the possibilities for the number of heads you can get okay two what else what are all the possibilities Two is one of them. You can flip a coin twice and get two heads. You can flip a coin and get one heads. And you can flip a coin and you can get zero. So we say this zero, one, and two. Now, this is an example. This is an example where each outcome does not have the same probability. We'll get into a little bit more of why later on, but in this case, the probability of rolling a zero is one out of four. The probability, no, so, sorry, of getting zero heads is one out of four. The probability of getting one heads, if we look up there, there's, you can get heads, tails, or tails heads. It's two out of four, 0.5, one half, however you want to note it. And the probability of getting the two is one fourth. Basically, in any quantitative, anytime you try to count for multiple events, the probabilities will not be equal. And we'll, we'll like I said, we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, Number of outcomes if I were to flip a coin five times how many possible outcomes would 
there be? So if I flip a coin five times, how many possible outcomes would there be? This is something we call counting. Okay, um, in my discrete mathematics class, we spend like a week going into it. We're going to spend around 15 minutes going into it. And what I mean by counting is that there, we're looking here at, there's, we're going to flip a coin five times. And for each of these outcomes, you can get heads or tails, heads or tails, heads or tails. So there's two outcomes for the first chance. There's two outcomes in the second chance, two outcomes in the next one, two outcomes in the next one, and two outcomes in the next one. Heads or tails for each of the five coin flips. As such, this is equivalent as two to the fifth, which means there are 32 outcomes. So if we were to flip a coin, there would be 32 different pro pro uh, possibilities, okay? If we were counting the number of heads, we could have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Is, is, are those, uh, is that 32 different outcomes? Yes or no? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is that 32? No, I know it's a kind of... A dumb question you might say, but it's at least valid to ask and making sure. <laughs> no. So, would all the probabilities be equivalent? Was the probability of zero going to be the same as the probability of a one, of one heads? The answer is no. The probability is not the same. It is actually, and we will learn how to calculate these over the over this week, but they are not equal equal probabilities. And this is something a lot of people really don't understand. And, and we're gonna take time to really go into why this isn't. Don't worry, I'm not this is not like you're learning everything today. Kind of giving just an introduction of what we're gonna try to answer and and, and why. But they're not equals. And, and as you know, the normal model, probabilities closer to the center are more likely. And it's actually true here. The probability of getting a two, two heads or three heads is actually the highest probability. You're more likely to get two or three than you are to get zero or five. And the reason is that if we listen at all the income outcomes, you can get just like over here, the probability of getting one right in the middle was actually greater than the other ones because you can get heads, tails, or tails, heads. There was two different ways that you can get one heads. But there's only one way to get heads, 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 or one way to get tails, tails. So the same gets true for over here. The probability of zero is the less. And actually, it turns out that the probability of getting none is going to be the probability of getting five because it was the probability was 0.5. Because the probability was 0.5. The probability will not be 0.5 in all outcomes, but right now we are dealing with, with those ones right there. We're going to talk about things called independent events. And most of the work that we're going to do, are we're going to work with independent events. And an independent events means that the outcome... of one event is not influenced by the outcome of prior events. This is something that a lot of people have a hard time believing a hard time in the conceptually it's not that bad but in the real world when we actually speak with our actions it's something a lot of people have a hard time with i.e. a coin comes up heads 50 times in a row What is the probability 
that the 51st coin flip is heads. So coin came up heads 50 times in a row. What's the probability that the 51st coin flip is heads? Point five. The coin we say does not re <coughs> remember <coughs> it's independent so it doesn't matter that the coin came up head now of course there's there's two parts of reality a it's 0.5 or B, the answer is one. Okay, it's one of the two. Can somebody tell me why the answers could technically be, could technically be one? Maybe we'll turn off our mic. Well, oh, hold on, a I'm not gonna force anybody. Why could the probability have been one? They could have all been heads. Yeah, a two coin, a two headed coin. So maybe they were cheating. All right. So maybe their person that was flipping the coin did have a two sided coin, a two head, uh, a double headed coin. Um, so it's either broken in the sense that it's not, but if it's, and this is why sometimes we'll say a fair coin, you might add in like a fair coin, you might see in the problem, because that tells you that the probability of each one is 0.5. Or they might just tell you the probability of it. Um, we get that. Now, what a lot of people will say, um, we need to be careful. There is no such thing as hot streaks. or law of averages in probability. Okay. Now, sometimes in the real world, we might have to correct and be like, you know, somebody's like, for example, baseball is a game of averages, they say, and statisticians and probability love, love baseball because there are hot streaks as people say but it's just that's just randomness sometimes there's something good earlier on and in, in the end and then basically in the overall it balances each other out over the course of a season a 300 hitter is a 300 hitter uh, you know and so forth um now sometimes people do improve and they do get better we're talking about basketball shaquille o'neal once made 20 free throws in a row but he was a terrible basketball player. His still his probability of making a, a, any free throw was still, I think, something like you know, almost like 0.5. All right. But sometimes a good basketball player, you know, Steph Curry might miss two in a row. All right. And and that just because you know, in terms of the rules of probability, it's okay. A lot of people have problems. We talked about this idea of randomness. If I were to say, you know, and we had we were in class, be like. If you were to try to list out heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, and, and make it random, you would not want to do heads, 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 like heads five times in a row. But actually, the, the chance of getting heads five times in a row, if you if you flip the coin a hundred times, is actually pretty likely that at one point you're gonna get a, a streak. But there's no such thing as hot streaks. In other words, in the example, in the example of the coin flips of 50 heads, somebody, you know, the hot streak would believe that the probability of a heads is now greater than 0.5. Well, I just got 50 in a row, so that means the chance of the next one becoming heads 
man, it's on a streak. I'm going to ride this streak. Um, and the next one's going to be a heads. So some people will be saying that, no, that's not true. The probability of getting a heads is still 0.5. But people who believe in the, the hot streak, um, is these are both short runs. I want to note that these are both short run probabilities. Um, they believe like the next one's going to be heads. Well, there was 50 heads in a row. The next, the chance of another heads has to be higher. All right. Um, this happens a lot when, when catastrophic, uh, um, catastrophic events happen in real life. All right. Somebody dies, some type of earthquake happens. Um, and it might see something happen two times in a row. And you're like, wow, the chance of that happening was so low and two of them just happened. I'm not going on a plane. I'm not going to go drive. I'm not going to visit that city, state, country because there were just two things that happened or multiple things are happening. So the chance of it happening now, it's going to be greater that if I go, there is a higher chance. Now, of course, if things are in the real world are changing and actually evolving, that's a different aspect. But if strictly from a probability aspect, no, that happens. Some people who believe in the law of averages, they believe, based on this in instance, they believe, well, I e VES, that the probability of a heads will be less than 0.5. They believe, okay, there was 50 heads in a row. The next one has to be tails. You know, they'll, they'll say that one. The next one, it's more. it has to be tails. It's going to be tails. If I had to put my money on it, it's going to be tails because I just got 50 in a row. It has to, the, the probability is 0.5. So if I have all of this probability, and it's heads, 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 they're all coming up heads, it, it, the next one's bound to come up tails because it has to correct itself. It has to average out to be 0.5. No. It's the in the long run, not a short run. So while we got 50 heads in a row, which is nearly impossible to have, but it could happen, um, when we talk about it, the average probability ending up at 0.5 it could be a million coin flips all right so it is possible that you know and, and it should correct itself over the course of history if you flip the coin a million times a billion times it will eventually get to about to be about 0.5 but when when dealing with things in the short run and thinking that the probabilities do change that is not true. So there's no such thing as a hot streak. There's no such thing as the law of averages. Hot streaks thinking that if something's going, the probability must be greater than what it states, and the law of averages must be less. Now, eventually, we're going to use this concept of probabilities to test things. If someone told you, you know, the chance of a coin getting heads 50 times, or getting heads is 50%, and you got 50 heads, well, that would probably make me um, change my belief in this coin. At some point, I got to have to start believing that this coin is a double-headed coin, right? Now, it doesn't mean that it's a double-headed coin. It's possible to be a double-headed coin. But at some point, heads, 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 heads. At some point, statistically speaking, I have to say, this has become statistically impossible. It is statistically significant for this not for this for that to happen. Um, so these results are statistically significant to make me believe that this is a two-sided coin at some point. And and what we will eventually learn at the end of this coin is how many coin flips? When is it? Is it after two? Heads, heads. If the coin came up heads, heads, would you be like, you're cheating? Would it take five coin flips? Heads, 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 heads? Would you be like, oh, you know what? No, something's wrong here. How many coin flips does it take? We will eventually answer that question. Um, your homework is posted on Google Classroom. It's from the textbook. Now, 